I'm Robert Williams from MetalRules.com and joining me tonight in Austin, Texas is Emil Nightmare Industries on lead guitar for Death Stars and Jonas Skinny Disco Kanger on bass. How are you guys doing tonight? Pretty good. How are you? Doing great, thanks. So you guys, uh, this is your first live performance in North America. How does it feel to finally be on tour in the U.S.? And what all can your American fans expect to witness at a Death Stars concert tonight? Well, first, it feels fucking amazing to be here for the first time. It's uh, yeah, It's been our goal for so long to come here, but it's always been something coming in the way to, to make it happen. So. And uh, yeah, according to what people can expect, it's, yeah, we're going to do our best to, yeah, to make love to this beautiful crowd. <laughs> What are you guys looking forward to check out the most in the U.S.? I'm really fond of the this bit of you know the south of of America, but like you know every, every bit has its its own its own uh, charm. Charm. Yeah, I think it's gonna be great to see the whole country, yeah. like different parts of it. We, we we really look at this like a like a road trip. You know, we we get to see all. All the, the the whole country all, yeah. almost basically, and uh, that's an experience not many can yeah get to see from Europe. You know, to travel through through the country and meet all these people. So. You guys are road dogs. You've been everywhere. Yeah, You've but not here. All corners of the earth. What do you guys think about American beer? Oh, I love, love it. American oh. beer. Yeah, but, but we're not talking like. Not, not like not. Budweiser or <laughs> Miller, but I love the craft beer. Yeah, the microbreweries. Yeah, 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 like IPAs. And, they're, 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 and there's so much of it, and yeah. it never ends. And that's what actually I was looking forward to a lot on this tour. That's why we got a big fridge. <laughs> yeah, so we can fill it up and you know, get all, go to all the different states and buy the local beers and just fill it up. While you're in Texas, you're gonna want to try Shiner Bach. Okay. Cool. Probably not so much Lone Star. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, no. Why? Uh, <laughs> Lone Star it, is It's like a nice a, logo, but yeah. it stops there. <laughs> it stops there. <laughs> I, I never tried Lone Star. What is it, like a, a lager, like very pale or... Yeah. It's yeah. water water mixed with beer, maybe. Water mixed with piss, yeah. yeah piss, cool. <laughs> I've had that. <laughs> I have to try one, at but least. But accidentally. <laughs> So I've heard about Death Stars coming together out of the ashes of black metal band Swordmaster and of course featuring some former members of Dissection. But I'd like to hear it from you guys now that I got you here. Um, tell me about how the band was originally formed and how your current lineup ended up working together. Yeah, it was um, it was kind of funny. Me and Whiplash, the singer, we were in Swordmaster. Um, and we... Uh, it was 1999, the end of the year. We just did a Swordmaster album in 90, at the end of 98, so it was released in 99. And then we just felt like, because in Swordmaster we were trying all these, we were trying out a lot of stuff. We were kids basically, you know, trying to find your own expression and learn what's your, you know, your own sound and stuff. And we just felt like we, uh, painted ourselves into a corner where we wanted to do something completely different because we felt that we grew as musicians and we had all these ideas that we couldn't do with Swordmaster so um, and then in January 2000 we got a phone call from from a sub label to Universal Music in Sweden and they were interested to sign Swordmaster uh, because they thought it would be cool to have a, like a death black metal release on a major label because it hadn't been really done in Sweden before. Okay. And then we told them, yeah, okay, cool, uh, but we got this new idea. Uh, let us make a demo. And they're like, oh, fine, we'll you know book some studio time for you guys. Just write a few songs, and and then we um, we wrote three songs, recorded them, and they just you know they loved it. So um, they. Uh, signed us and we they financed the first album synthetic generation and yeah yeah and then that's kind of how we formed and then uh, we were basically a bunch of friends so we had the beast uh, the guitar player from swordmaster as well he was in death stars then and then our friend bone um, who was in dissection before 
he uh, played the drums. And basically we spent like six months in the studio just trying to figure out what the fuck we were doing and then at the end it worked out. And yeah, so that's the start. And then we released it on Universal in Sweden and then uh, we got signed with Nuclear Blast for a release worldwide. So, and then we've been working with Nuclear Blast since then, you know. That's where I came in, it was like yeah. Yeah, the year after the release. So. Yeah, we didn't have a bass player. We had two guitar players, a drummer, and a singer. And we had the keyboards on backtracks, and, and and we didn't have a bass player. So we were looking everywhere. We had like a, a session, bass players live and stuff like that. And then we met this guy. Yeah. What was Skinny up to at that time? Yeah, he was drunk. <laughs> yeah. You were drunk? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. And he was, uh, I don't know, what, you, what were you doing? been in, in and out of bands my whole life but it's you know these guys really needed a bass player so yeah I, and, and I, when, when I um, met these guys I realized that they are they were just as stupid as me so we we got along <laughs> real quick <laughs> same way it was like we had one rehearsal and it was like uh oh this is gonna turn out bad <laughs> and yeah, yeah so here I am 12, 12 years later and, yeah I'm still in the band. Yeah. The rest is history. So you guys are currently touring in support of last year's The Perfect Cult full length. Your vocalist Whiplash here recently commented that the songs are about your life and experiences and usually from a jet black perspective. What makes Death Stars the perfect cult? Well, that's the contradiction. You know, there is no perfect cult. The, you know, cults, that's the scary thing that people build up and, you know, that you don't want to go there. So, of course, we want to lure people into our cult. Yeah. So, it must have been a lot of pressure delivering a follow up to 2009's hugely successful Night Electric Night full length that landed at number 51 on Billboard's Heat Seekers chart. Do you feel like the perfect cult has eclipsed the success of Night Electric Night? Has Nuclear Blast been pretty supportive in terms of getting the word out on the new album? I think they've been doing a pretty good job. I don't know how it's been in the States, but in, in Europe, yeah, for sure. Uh, so we don't really see other responses been here in the same way since we live in Europe. But, uh, I mean, it's a... The Perfect Cult is more of a introvert album. It's it's darker and it's not as... It's not as much of a party album as Night Electric Night, so that has... I mean, Night Electric Night, I think, has more of a commercial value. But this was an album that we really needed to make for personal reasons, because we've been through some stuff, and it's, that's why it's kind of dark and you know uh, more introvert. So um, yeah, but it's it's been really well received, you know. And yeah. Yeah. But I think for 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 from my perspective on the future, I think the next album is gonna be not as dark as this one. It's gonna be more. You know, outgoing. outgoing, more like heavy riffing and stuff. But I think this actually was that's what we always say. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it always yeah, but I think this album like, was really like yeah, a, a reflection of a very long, complicated period for was. everyone in different aspects. You know. Okay, so talking about the next record, you guys usually have like a three to four year gap between albums, or you guys are already working on new material and. Yeah, so how do you describe that? Yeah, we've been on tour now since basically since the fall. This the album came out in summertime last summer, uh, and then the plan is to start writing music as soon as we come back. Now uh, we have a few summer festivals in Europe and stuff, but um, yeah, we're really you know how do you say motivated and, and uh, inspired to start working on a new album. So I don't think it's gonna be like a five year gap or four or five years. It's gonna be quicker than that. Till the next till the it's next our one. goal at least, yeah. you know. That's exciting. Yeah. So one of the tracks off the perfect cold, Fire Galore. Well, let's talk about late last year you guys were traveling en route to perform in Italy during the Claws to Europe tour, and the entire band and road crew narrowly escaped tragedy and certain death when an electrical fire on your tour bus consumed everything in seconds after an explosion in the rear of the bus. Walk us through how that all went down. That must have been freaky shit. Yeah, it was pretty fucked up. You want a drink? Uh, well, yeah, it was pretty fucked up. Um, uh, yeah, the, I think like parts of, yeah, we 
we're a full tour bus, so we, we just had some problems with the bus the night before, um, which made us, we, we had to cancel one show in Italy because the bus had to, uh, to be repaired. Uh, so we went to a hotel in Austria. Uh, the, the morning after, we were supposed to pick up the bus. So we thought every, everything was fine. So we went into the bus, back on the highway, and, and it was six in the morning, so everybody went to bed, except from Nightmare and Whiplasher. Uh, we sat up, talking a little bit, and then uh, and I just remember, <laughs> I don't know if you want to take your part for it, but I just remember got woken up and it's like, everybody out, 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 out. But then, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, basically we were sitting down uh, downstairs, because in Europe you have double deckers. Okay. Uh, tour buses, so everybody's sleeping upstairs, and we were sitting downstairs. Um, and then basically, the driver just stops the bus, he starts driving weird to the side, and starts braking, and you know, and he starts screaming, like, There's a fire, everybody out now! And you can tell in his voice that this is not a joke, you know. Yeah. And then, so everybody reacted really fast. We just screamed up the stairs, Everybody has to get out now! And like, in a few seconds, just the door opened, we all went out. And, and while we were running out, like almost on top of each other, like you could hear it exploding in the back because of the engine in the back. It's like, <laughs> and you were like seeing flames thrown everywhere, and it was Fuck. all filled with smoke. Yeah. And you, you thought, like, okay, we're losing everything right now. So everybody's running for their lives. And the thing was, we were on a bridge, so while you're running out, Jumping over the fence, you almost, you know, jumped down. Fell off the bridge. Fell off yeah. the bridge. And it almost. Like, it was like if it would have been nighttime, yeah. somebody would probably fall over. Yeah. But because it was in the morning, the sun was it's, up. You know, it was like, but it was, you know, everybody came out. Like people that were in bed, they didn't wear, you know, I didn't have shoes. I didn't or, have yeah. pants. Or, you know, it was like just running out as you were. So. Yeah. So it was, it was freaky, but you know, we, we had the fire brigade, the Red Cross, everybody came, took good care of us, they took us up to this little ski resort, like a hotel, and there we had like, yeah, some members of like the fire brigade, police, Red Cross, partying with us, taking good care of us, Last putting day. blankets around us, yeah. playing <laughs> poker, <laughs> you know, having a good time. Were you able to get better gear, like after an insurance? Trailer? Actually, actually, we were lucky enough to the, the gear uh, yeah. was fine because that was in the trailer behind. But like, we lost a whole lot of like all our merchandise, oh, shit. a yeah, lot of personal, personal bags, stuff. and yeah. like all of that just right. went up yeah. in flames. So. so your former rhythm guitarist Cat Casino exited the band prior to the release of the Perfect Cold. What were the reasons for his departure? Was it an amicable split? Uh, well, he had some problems. He couldn't find his nail polish. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> no, 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 no. He no. He just decided that he wanted to spend more time at home. And just, yeah. yeah, it was his decision. He he's been touring. He started the band very young. Uh, and, uh, he he's, was. I think he was seventeen when he joined. Yeah, the he band. was lying to us about his age. Yeah, he told us he was eighteen, <laughs> but it was actually a couple of months before he was 18, so he was actually 17, but he didn't want to tell us that he was 17 because he didn't think he'd get the part in the band. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, he's been touring basically since he was 17 till uh, 20, how old is he? I don't know, 24, 25. Yeah, 25 maybe. So like his whole grown up life, he's been on the road with us. Uh -huh. And then he just, I guess he just felt like he, he needed to find out what else there is in life apart from just touring and, and playing, you know, partying and stuff like that. So I think it was just a, you know, at a point in his life where he needed to make a change. Yeah, uh, make a change. And I respect that. We're still really good friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see. We don't know if he's coming back in the band or, or not, but, uh, but uh, we don't have any bad blood or anything. We still feel like a family. So until he comes back, it's just going to remain a four piece? Well, yeah, I mean, we, we, we don't know. We're, we, we're we, not really waiting for him to come back, but we didn't feel that we need to bring in another person because we, you know, we've been playing so much together. We have been doing like almost a thousand live shows. Wow. That, um, 
that uh, we just let's just do it on our own, you know. I mean, if you want to bring in another member, you have to go out there and find someone that you like personally and also is a good musician. And, and it know. takes a while to break in, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So since we've been doing doing this for so long, we have our way to bring in another one who has his way of doing things. It's going to take a long time to break in, you know. Yes. So we just kept on going the way yeah. we were. And it's been working out great. Yeah, actually. definitely. Actually. Yeah. And more beer for us. Yeah, more beer for you. <laughs> what What's the most important things that you would look for in a in a fifth member? In a fifth member. What hoops do they have to jump through to be a dead star? <laughs> well, there's the list is so long. Uh, I don't know. I guess that's the thing. We don't know. Yeah. That's why we didn't even yeah. really look for anyone. We yeah. haven't even. We're not really. Yeah, we 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 got we got a lot of emails and stuff. But yeah. Like, yeah, there's a lot of people who are asking, come on, let me, you know, audition for you guys and stuff, but uh, we never really uh, felt that we needed that, you know, so, I mean, we've been playing so much that we're kind of tight, the whole band, all together, the way we are, so, just never felt and, that. And also, you don't want to expose other people to what we are like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, that's just mean. Inappropriate. Yeah, inappropriate. That's it. <laughs> so you guys have referred to yourself in the past as Dead Lamb, and some people would describe Dead Stars as industrial metal. How do you guys feel about that tag? And are there any industrial acts that you feel have influenced your sound in any way? Well, yeah. Is it more Hanoi, Hanoi Rocks or Skinny Puppy? I, well, think that's I think the, that's, that's the mixture. The, yeah, you know. I think that's the the death glam. It's like a little bit of both. Okay. Because yeah, it's like a lot of we have a lot of keyboards and and, and uh, synthetic stuff. And then you, we have the kind of rock and rollish attitude to it. So I guess the mixture of the it's kind of a mixture of <laughs> that's weird flash. <laughs> right. Uh, a mixture of the the you know kind of strict synth and industrial attitude and the attitude that you have from rock and roll bands that's kind of that starts that's kind of where yeah you know where it comes all well, but, but, but it really doesn't matter what people call us you know we, we we will always try to you know explore ourselves to make music and we don't know what direction we're going to take it so it may alter in the music but yeah we'll probably use the same components always yeah. so I think we have a very specific sound that we yeah. found that is, you know, kind of a signature sound. A lot of people say that when they hear a Death Star song, they immediately know what band it is because a certain mixture and sound. I mean, you can see that, sure. Yeah. So, yeah, we have that, but then, of course, we want to try to, to expand in new ways and write different types of songs and not repeat ourselves too much. People can call it what they want to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, because we're doing an interview for MetalRules.com, the coolest metal website in the galaxy, yeah. how did you guys originally get into metal music? Who were the bands that inspired you guys and made you want to be headbangers or death glamours or whatever? Uh, for me, uh, it was definitely Kiss when I was a kid. Uh, Kiss, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, those heavy metal bands. Um, yeah, of course, the Purple Black Sabbath, all those, you know, 70s. Um, and then in the 80s, Metallica came, it was a whole trash metal thing, Anthrax, bands like that, uh, Slayer, and then, yeah, death metal and black metal started coming, you know, uh, and then, yeah, just for me personally, I just kind of, you know, it went in steps and it went more and more extreme. <laughs> so I love all kinds of metal music. And you know, who got into it first? You or John? My big brother, of course. He he was one and a half year older than me, so he, he started bringing home all these cool albums, you know, vinyls. And I was like younger, so I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, listen to this. You know, he would you know show me all the stuff that he heard from friends in school or whatever, you know. So he always 
kept bringing home stuff and then I got totally into it and I started finding albums that he didn't hear and I would show him so it's like both of us were total you know since we started listening to heavy metal when we were like six seven so and then we started collecting vinyls and albums around that time as well because that's was, early yeah that's we really would save early. our allowance money from that we got from our parents we would just save it and go to the record store and just buy like new kiss album or you know some whatever it was at the time yeah cassette tapes and vinyls cassettes and vinyl and you say yeah, well, I, I started up because my uncle, I started listening more to classical rock. It was a lot of Jimi Hendrix, uh, Led Zeppelin, Sabbath, and then, uh, you know, we, time I was seven, Europe were really big in Sweden, so I started listening to them, and it was my sister, and then I got into heavier and heavier music that way. So by the time I was yeah, 12, 13, 14, when I was 14, I started work uh, like pra uh, had a pra internship like in a guitar shop with Mike from Open. Okay. So he gave me a lot of like music uh, to listen to. So yeah, like into death metal that way. But yeah, it was just you know. But then I, I like all kinds of music. It's been like spread out, so it's been equally this much everywhere. Very cool guys. You guys are currently touring with Septic Flesh and Moonspell playing all over the fucking continent, all over North America. What's next on the table for Death Stars after this current tour wraps up? We have uh, summer festivals in summer Europe. Festivals. Yeah. So okay. that's basically it. what we know of. Yeah. yeah. And writing new material. Yeah. Writing new material. Yeah. 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 And then probably get back on the road. Go in the studio, get back on the road. Then get back on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, I'd like to thank both of you for taking the time to talk about yeah, what you did. Before we wrap this up, do you guys got any last words for your Death Stars fans watching at home? Yeah, don't miss us out on the road. Yeah. Motherfucking hell.